Hello! Today we're exploring a fun and budget-friendly idea. Thrifting in our own backyard. It's amazing what you can find right outside your door. So grab your gloves and let's see what hidden treasures we can uncover and repurpose. Hi, my name is Katie from Lady Red Crafting and let's get started. While working in the yard, I found two pots that were sun damaged and really, really dirty. So I took them over to the sink and using my Dawn Power Spray, I'm going to just go ahead and wash these really well. Then I take these back out once they were completely dry and I grab my Rust-Oleum paint and this is a Satin Colonial Red Ultra Cover Spray Paint. And I think I got this at Lowe's, but you can get this at most hardware stores or on Amazon. And once we get these completely covered, I just set them aside to dry and I'm gonna go inside and start working on my napkins. So I found these beautiful butterfly napkins at Home Goods, and they're a Martha Stewart brand napkin. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove the bottom two layers. And this second layer on the napkin was definitely giving me trouble and it did take me quite a bit of effort to get that off of this napkin, but it is well worth it. So don't worry if you tear it a little bit on the sides because we're going to be cutting out just the butterflies. Now, once you get those layers removed, you need to do that again for two more napkins. So you have three napkins ready to go. And then all we're going to do is cut out all of those little butterflies. And I used 12 butterflies for this project. Next, I grab my outdoor Mod Podge since we're going to be keeping these pots outside. And this pot liked to roll around quite a bit on my table. So what I found was using two little bottles of Waverly paint, I was able to brace that pot to keep it from rolling around on me. Next, I grab my Mod Podge and I'm just going to paint a nice coat in the center of this pot. And then very carefully, I'm gonna lay one of the butterflies over the top of the Mod Podge. And using some cling wrap, I go ahead and just pat that down until all the wrinkles are out. Now, once this is dry, we're going to rotate the planter and repeat this step five more times. So we'll be a total of six butterflies on this planter. And between butterflies, I was just rotating back and forth between the two different planters so we could get both of them looking beautiful. And now that we have all these butterflies on our planters, we're going to set these aside to dry for a little bit. Now, since these planters are going to be outside, I'm going to seal them with my matte clear enamel by Rust-Oleum. To ensure that this sealed really nicely, I did do two coats. And once everything has dried, we can fill these up with some beautiful flowers. And here is what our pots look like. I am so happy with how these turned out. I can't wait to display them in my yard this summer. So this chicken has seen better days. I bought it about 10 years ago and it's been in a few different flower pots and I've moved it around the yard and then it got forgotten about and buried in some moss. So I decided to bring it in and wash it with some Dawn Power Wash and scrub off whatever paint that I could. And this is what I was left with. So since this was made with a hard plastic, I'm gonna use my Paint for Plastic by Folk Art. And the first paint I used here was the Earl Grey. And then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of this black olive paint. And I'm mixing it together in a bowl just to make a darker gray. When you're looking at this chicken, it is sitting inside of a noodle can. And so that bottom piece there is the lid of the tin can. So I'm gonna paint that first, since that's on the bottom part of this little statue. And that way, once we get that bottom piece completely done and dry, we can flip that over and do the remainder part of the chicken. And to get the coat that I really wanted on this chicken, I did have to do two coats of paint. So you notice there that I used my heat tool just to dry the paint and that worked just fine for this plastic paint. 
Now once all of the gray paint was done and dry, I went ahead and I grabbed the Folk Art Plastic Paint in Cherry Cola. And that is what I'm going to paint the can. I'm going to start out by doing two coats of paint on the bottom part of this can. Now that the bottom half of our little statue is complete and we can set this down, we are going to grab some coffee creamer paint and we're going to use that for our chicken. So while we're painting our chicken, I wanna hand it over to Trish from Crafting Cousins. She's gonna tell you all about this amazing playlist we're a part of this month and the fun giveaway you don't wanna miss out. Welcome to the Thrift Flip Road Trip. In today's video, we are participating in an open challenge hosted by Unicorn Dust Designs, Crafting Cousins, and special guest host, DIY Craftaholic. Here, talented creators breathe new life into old items. But wait, there's more. We're thrilled to announce that this month's playlist will have a special giveaway with not one, not two, but five lucky winners. Prizes include DIY paint and Roy Cycle decoupage paper from Unicorn Dust Designs, three wood craft kits from Crafting Cousins, and a $100 Visa gift card from CJ DIY. To enter, just watch the May Thrift Flip Road Trip playlist and comment your favorite project from each creator on their video. Mark your calendar for May 25th when we will announce the winners on our community tabs. Open to U.S. residents only. Don't miss out on this chance to win and be sure to Thank you, Trish. love by following the playlist. As you can see here, I moved on to below. using some of that red paint again and finishing that can that the chicken is sticking out of. And while we still have that red paint out, we'll finish some of the details on the chicken's face. Now it's time to paint the beak. I'm going to use Paint for Plastic Folk Art in the color Iced Tea, and this turns out so nice. It's perfect color for a beak on a chicken. And for her eyes, we're just going to use our black plastic paint. And while we have the black paint out, I'm going to use that to paint the word noodles. And you can kind of see an indentation that was on there previously but I don't remember the last time I saw anything written on this chicken. And there's a small circle that is going around the word noodles just to make it look kind of like a label. And I just reused the coffee creamer paint for this. And for our last paint color, we're gonna just reuse that gray that we made up and go around the outside of the can, giving it all the details to make it look like a tin can. So once we are done painting our chicken, I did let it sit overnight to make sure it was completely dry before I sealed it. And to seal this, I'm using Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel and I did two coats of this. And here is how it transformed. I wanna do a before and after photo of this because this turned out so cute. And now to go put her back in the garden, I am so excited. Thrifting in your yard can be so much fun and so rewarding. This terracotta pot definitely has seen better days, but who knows, we can make this into a beautiful decoupage pot. So what we're gonna do is start out by washing this with our Dawn Power Wash. And once that is completely dried, we have a blank surface to work with. And this is what it looks like. You can kind of see that it's deteriorating on the sides there and there's a rough spot on it, but I think this is gonna be amazing for texture and it's gonna really elevate our creation. So I'm going to get a paintable surface and I'm just going to place the pot on top. Next, I'm gonna grab my frilly chalk paint in the color plaster. We're gonna just give a nice coat of paint around the whole entire pot and we're just gonna go around the edges on the top 
about a half an inch down. You may have noticed that I didn't go over the rough edges on the pot with the paint yet. And this is because I wanted to use a different type of brush for that piece. I'm using a bigger brush that's rounded and I'm going to do a really light dry brush over the top of this area. And I'm already really liking how this is turning out. And if you didn't want to decoupage it, you could probably just leave it like this and it already gives it a really cool texture. But I wanted to decoupage this and I found this adorable napkin at Home Goods, and I love it. It has these cute little ladybugs on it and we're gonna pull the back two layers off of this. And an easy trick to pull those layers off is using just a little piece of painter's tape. I've also used just regular clear tape as well and it works great. So I'll set this napkin aside for a minute and I grabbed an egg carton and I'm just going to use that as a way to hold my pot in place while I'm doing my decoupage. And today I'm going to be trying out the new Mod Podge multi-surface and this one is matte and I'm going to just put a little bit of it in a bowl here so it'll be a little bit easier for me to use my paintbrush to spread this on. And so when I'm spreading around this Mod Podge, I am making sure that I don't put any of it on that rough edge. I'm only doing it where I did the solid color white paint. We are not going to be sticking the napkin to that area where it's all roughed up. To make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm only doing half of the pot at one time for the decoupage. And now I just laid the napkin over the top of the pot. Don't worry about covering that rough area. We'll get that off later. Next, I grabbed a little bit of cling wrap and we're going to use that cling wrap to help smooth everything down and into place. And I am going to fold the napkin down into the edges of the pot to give it a cool scallop look inside. As you can see, I'm just rubbing my hands across that plastic wrap just to smooth everything into place. And I'm gonna put this down onto our surface here and I had put a little bit of Mod Podge on the bottom as well. And we're just going to fold the napkin down into the bottom piece of this pot. And then I remove the piece of cling wrap, but I'm gonna keep it in my hand. And with one hand, I'm going to use it to hold down the decoupage napkin. And with the other hand, I'm gonna lightly tear the remainder of the napkin off of our pot. And once I've completely removed that other part of the napkin, I did come back around with a little bit of decoupage and just put down a little decoupage any place that it might be folding up just to make sure everything stayed into place. And now once that is dry, I put that back down on our egg carton and we're going to repeat the same steps for the other half of our pot. And once we finished tearing any of that extra napkin off of our pot, I did go back with the Mod Podge and I did what I did earlier and just sealed everything in. Now, once that was completely dry, I grabbed my Mod Podge Multi Gloss Finish and we're going to go ahead and seal everything in on the smoothed out areas. We are not going to put any of this Mod Podge on the roughed up areas because we don't want any glue over that napkin because it's going to make it so much easier to remove in a few minutes. Now, once everything is dry, it will look like this. And I'm going to grab a razor blade and a makeup applicator. And I just get these makeup, makeup applicators at Walmart. And using the razor blade, I'm just going to cut around the edge of the napkin on that roughed up area. And I use the makeup applicator just to assist in getting that napkin off. And I'm just gonna keep repeating these steps until I've removed all of that napkin off of the roughed up area on the terracotta pot. This is turning out great. For our next step here is we're gonna grab that egg carton again and set the pot back on top and using my Mod Podge multi-surface gloss we're going to go ahead and just paint a nice coat over the whole entire pot this time including the roughed up areas which will help seal in any paint and hopefully stop any more corrosion 
And now that everything has dried, I want to add a few finishing touches. I found these adorable ladybugs last year at Dollar Tree, and I had a bunch left over, so I'm going to hot glue them onto our pot. They do have a self-adhesive sticker on there, but I was afraid that that wouldn't hold up very well, which is why I'm adding some extra glue. And I'm going to put three of these ladybugs on our pot. And I just love how this pot turns out. It is such a big transformation. Here's a before and after picture. And if you're watching and enjoying this content, please consider hitting that subscribe button below. It really helps my channel grow. Thanks. This is an upcycling project. This lamp I've had in my garden for the last two years. It still lights up, but it's not looking great. So we're gonna start out by just taking all of it apart and we're gonna give this a nice cleaning. And to do this, I am going to use some hot water with some vinegar and some baking soda. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of the vinegar and the baking soda and mix it into a paste and then using a toothbrush, that'll allow me to really scrub the clear plastic on this little light. And now that all of our pieces are nice and clean, I'm going to go ahead and put the steak back together. And what we'll do here is I'm grabbing some of this plastic paint from Plaid in black, and I'm just going to refresh the steak using that black paint. And all I needed was one coat, and this looked brand new. Now while this is drying, I went ahead and I grabbed a little piece of floral foam and I just cut a little hole in it so that I could stick the lamp inside that hole. Next, I grabbed some cling wrap and I'm going to put that over the top of the green foam and then add the, plat the light back over the top of the cling wrap. Now I'm grabbing my plastic paint in the color red and I'm going to paint the plastic pieces on this lid. And we're not going to paint over the top of the solar panel, but everywhere else we're going to paint red. Now to cover the black with the red paint, it did take me three coats of paint. And I actually did a fourth coat because I really wanted to make sure that you saw no black underneath. Now, once everything is dry, I went back to my black plastic paint and I'm using a Q-tip and just Putting a little bit of paint on the Q-tip, I'm going to add some little dots onto our red lid. You haven't guessed already, we are making a little ladybug lamp. And I think this turns out really cute. I like how this is a, something you can do for an upcycle, but you can also do this with a brand new light if this is some sort of style that you want in your garden. Now once the black paint has dried. I grab my white plastic paint and I'm just going to make two little eyeballs using the back side of a Q-tip. Next, I grab the black paint again and I'm just going to use the back side of my brush and make some little eyelashes on our little ladybug. Here is what our little lady is looking like right now. I really like how she's turning out. For our last little step, I'm gonna take some hot glue and I'm gonna hot glue a little piece of pipe cleaner and I made antennas for our little ladybug. All we have to do is add her back to the top of our lampshade and put the stake back in and we have a brand new lamp ready to go for the summer. And I love how this turns out. This is such a great upcycling project. And our cute little ladybug wants to remind you about the Thrift Flip Road Trip. Please check the description box below and check out the whole entire playlist. And there you have it. These thrifted projects from the yard turned out amazing. I hope you enjoyed these crafts today as much as I did. If you're looking for fun and creative ideas, be sure to check out our next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching, and until next time, craft more, stress less. <laughs>